Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Beat the Clock podcast. My name is Michelle Rubia Garcia, and I am here to help you grow. Through the many timed interviews I'll be having, all guests will answer four time specific questions. By answering these questions honestly, we hope to show you how each moment connects to the next. Whether they are entrepreneurs or thought leaders, all are invited to sit down, chat with me, and show you a realistic depiction of success. By doing so, we hope to change your mind and empower you to beat the clock. What are you waiting for? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Beat the Clock. My name is Michelle. If it is your first time here, welcome. You've come to a place full of inspiration and motivation, um, really just through people's testimonies and stories. And if you're coming back, hey, I see you. Um, either one, regardless of where you're at in your journey with BTC, is so important because you can't have success without that first step. But consistency is equally important. So thank you so much, guys. It really does matter to me that you're streaming these um, episodes because sometimes it can be very lonely, isolating, and frustrating to create. And I do this with a lot, a lot of love. So I hope you can see it. Anyways, um, now I want to kind of transition into the way we always start our podcast, which are through the BTC affirmations. They are the same three. Say them with me if you know them. If not, just breathe and I'll coach you through them. Here we go. Number one, I trust myself. So even if things feel rocky or uncertain, you can do it. Number two, my time is valuable. You were created for a specific reason in your specific place right now, and you're exactly where you need to be. And finally, number three, I can control how I use my time today. So you have the agency to really go out there and do whatever you want, regardless of how hard it seems. And so with that, um, we always start with those three to get you to calm down, to slow down, to breathe, and to really internalize the power that you're capable of. I really, really believe that, guys. And speaking of power, I want to talk about somebody who's so powerful, but in a special, special way. Her name is Jackie Borrego. And She's powerful because she's tender, and that really seems counterintuitive in our society. Um, Jackie's bio is so, so humble. It doesn't even begin to encapsulate her power, but I want to introduce her the way she wants to be introduced. Here we go. Jackie is just a girl trying to connect with those around her and with the world. Jackie believes in the power of learning and that learning from others is how we truly grow. You'll see that she does this through her podcast and she is actually devoting her studies to connecting with others. So I can't wait to show you this interview. I will see you on the other side. But for now, let's see how Jackie beats the clock. All righty. So the clock starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to BTC. I am here with Miss Jackie Borrego. She wants to be called the professional student. And I love that. So we'll roll with it. And she's also a fellow podcaster. So hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Can't complain. I have my cup of coffee, so I'm feeling good. Awesome. Yeah, I like we were talking about, I wish I could have coffee at this hour and survive, but I can't. So Honestly, we'll see. To be determined. Yeah, well, thank you so much for finally getting on to this space with me. Um, it's been like a little back and forth with us. Even yeah. like Instagram was trying to get in the way from this happening. <laughs> And we do, and our videos weren't like, you know, jiving, but we finally got through. And the reason I wanted to bring you on here was because I feel like you have a very different energy to your podcast, more, more like podcasts, but you're ultimately doing the same thing. You're just trying to have people um, connect with each other and with themselves. So what I normally like to do on every BTC episode, and I surprise, you know, people with this, but I kind of do my little research on every guest. And I like to come up with a phrase that is like the essence of that person, right? We, we ascribe a lot of labels to ourselves, but I try to see who are you at your core um, and what are you communicating to the world? So for me, I think you are a genuine connector, right? And that goes so much more 
than just connecting between people. You're like trying to connect people with resources, trying to connect people with new ideas. You're trying to always, always connect. And I feel like you started this entire podcast and community that you're building with the desire to genuinely connect. You know, they're, they're so, there's connection that's so transactional, but yours is so genuine and it's so visible. So I don't know what you feel about that, but that's how I see you. That is insane. And whoever's out there, if you're even questioning getting Michelle for hiring her for services for Life Coach, do it because you are fucking spot on. Can I curse? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, curse that's on? Okay. <laughs> um, I, as you were writing and you said, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to take a piece of try to figure out who you were, do some research. I wrote down as a note to make sure I said genuine connection through shared experience. I literally wrote it down and that is the whole reason I feel I'm on this earth. I feel I have a natural gift and even that's been difficult learning to say that I have a gift and being confident in that Mm -hmm. um, to connect with people and to meet people where they're at and in a very genuine way, not in a way that's fake or phony, um, just in a very non-judgmental way. It's one of my I feel favorite things about myself um, that comes with a shadow side too of feeling insecure about myself because I'm able to build so many other people up and connect a lot of people or connect to people. Um, so it comes with both good and bad, but the whole reason for the more like podcast is to do that, to create genuine, ex- genuine connection through shared experience and show people that at our core, we are really more alike than we are different. And in the places we are different, doesn't mean that they can't be celebrated to our schedules, to our relationships, to our um, experiences, to our careers. There's so many threads that make us alike. But in all of that, there's so many differences too. And it's learning how to see those um, that we can truly learn the most about ourselves is what I feel. Yeah. And I feel like um, with a lot of your stuff, it's just acceptance of where you're at, acceptance of a person. And like you're saying, maybe there are differences, but just, um, just being genuine about who you are, um, flaws and all, and just, um, I don't know. It's, I feel a lot of love from your page and this is just somebody casually scrolling at times. Right. And I really appreciate that you're stepping into this journey because we're both from the same city. Now you're in San Antonio, but Mm -hmm. um, you know, Laredo (laughs) is its own animal. And um, for all of its beauty, there's also so much stunted thinking. And so for you to actually break through that fear of, um, you know, trying to show that gift and own that gift when honestly our culture really told us to, to hide it. Um, I just really commend that and especially in another city. And so um, if I can get another Laredo in that's just as brave and just as willing to explore, um, I'll definitely do that. So yeah, this is where we jump into the actual pressure um (laughs) it's fun it's fun uh it's 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 like tense but it's fun so now we're gonna jump into the actual interview itself and so we always ask four questions if you pass the timer no big deal but just know that you have roughly eight and a half minutes to answer each question and we love to give personal stories and narratives to really inspire listeners that no matter where your trajectory started it has the ability to go to any height um, or rebound from any low uh, if you're just willing to do it and see it. So here we go. Question number one is who are, were you? Sorry. So in the past, what, what brought you to this point in your life? Who was I? Mm -hmm. That's so hard. You know, I, um, I was talking to you offline. We just got a sweet renter in our house and she's 18 years old and she has so much life ahead of her she's starting college she's a collegiate athlete i did none of i went to college but i was not a collegiate athlete and last night before bed you know i kept telling david i just want her to feel comfortable here i want her to feel at home like we're strangers and i want her to know that she's welcome here in this space it's her space too now and i told david gosh we were so different at 18 years old than we are now. And it's hard to think that freaking 10 years have passed. Um, And 
I look back to that girl and I feel like I used to put so much, I still do, pressure on myself, pressure to perform, pressure to excel, pressure to do well. Um, and anything less than that was crushing, like an earth shattering crushing. And so I would say who I was before I would in high school, things came pretty easy to me. Um, when it came to like athletics, I was a competitive cheerleader. Academics never came easy to me. So I've always been hardworking. I, that's something that's pretty common from back then to now. But I think moving into college, I realized that even though I had opportunities that were afforded to me, didn't mean that things were going to be even harder in college. I always knew I had to work hard in high school. That translated to college even more so. And I think back then, I really let that make me feel super insecure. I had never felt that emotion. So before I was really, really insecure and I had to do a lot of work to come out of that and step out of that. I went through a really hard breakup. I've always been a feeler. I would say, especially back then, I didn't really know how to handle all the emotions I was feeling, which kind of led me to make not the best decisions when it came to friendships or when it came to relationships or just like a lot of, um, I would say like executive functioning things like planning, um, the way I handled relationships or not showing up for myself or not showing up for my friends or, um, letting things bubble up, not really learning how to, knowing how to effectively communicate. I think I just like didn't know myself. There was this like version of myself that I thought I had to be and I never met that. I could never meet her. I could mm -hmm. never reach her. Mm -hmm. It was too much and it That's felt really like good. a constant failure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I'm never going to measure up to whoever that person is. And then I spoke oh, with Oh, sorry. It's because I was going to ask, you know, um, was that one relationship really the catalyst for this journey and this work that you're talking about? Or were there kind of red flags throughout your whole life? And that was just kind of the final straw? I think that's a great question. I've been thinking a lot about that relationship that taught me so much. And I think that there's always been a nature of me. I'm super inquisitive. I'm a very big people person. A lot of people would consider me um, extroverted. Mm -hmm. I've recently leaned into the fact that I'm more of an ambivert. I, kind of, <laughs> I, fall, I fall on the spectrum of like, I love being around people. I'm definitely don't really need to be the center of attention, but I love to find a group of people that I can sit and go deep with and go there fast. Mm -hmm. I'm not really good at small talk. I don't mm -hmm. know how to do it very well. It's uncomfortable for me. I'd rather like, tell me your deepest, darkest secrets. I know. And some people are like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so 100%. Yeah. But typically I feel our personality types welcome it and people are, like feel like they can unload, but also realizing now, which we'll go into later, like I don't need to hold all of that stuff too. I used to feel like I did. I had to hold all of other people's things onto myself and I didn't know how to navigate that. So other people's desires or other people's energy or other people's um, stresses or failures, like I felt like I would take on as my own. So I just kept feeling lost in like who I was and letting all the noise around me like really like confuse me. And looking at the surface, you would have never thought that in college. This is all re retro reflective. I'm like, wow, I had no idea who the F I was. I thought I did. And then I had this relationship that was a great relationship. It was someone that I think both of us thought we were going to be together for a long time. And we were, and it didn't end up working out for the better. And you realize you, we both were compromising in ways that we maybe shouldn't have been, especially being in a committed relationship now where me and David are equal partners. So that was the catalyst of like, I was so heartbroken. I needed to figure out a way to put myself back together. And I think I took a look at who I was really on the inside. And I attribute that to my friends. Um, people that I started connecting with here in San Antonio. I'm like, you know who you are. <laughs> but like, <laughs> they up. just made, yeah, they just made me feel like I could be who I really am and still be loved, even though I felt 
like that wasn't good enough because like I said, I kept feeling like there was this standard I had that I needed to meet and I never met that person. But my friends met me where I was and they're like, we love you as you are. And so as that happened, I started asking myself all these questions. Why do I believe what I believe in my faith? Who do I want to be? Who was I in the past? What do I actually want to do with my career? And I started actually learning to listen to myself and Mm -hmm. trust myself. Not all the other things that I was taking in from other people, from my parents, from my friends. Not that anybody was telling me do this thing, say this thing, be this thing, but all of that was so different than how I felt on the inside, how I felt felt wrong because it wasn't what everybody else was doing. Yeah. And so finally I started taking steps that felt good and that I'm like, I don't know why I'm taking this step, but it feels like the next right thing. <laughs> and it looked back then like a lot of missteps and it was really hard. I was like, I am not on path with my friends. I don't have a relationship. I don't have a career. I keep not getting into grad school. I keep doing all these things, but now here I am. And well, I'm sure we'll lead into the question of who are you and all those missteps led me here because they were the right steps, not because of anybody else, but because like they're what I wanted to do. So through all the noise, I finally was able to like put on noise canceling headphones and be like, you are worthy to show up how you are. And everybody's going to like, not only keep loving you, but they're going to really see you for who you actually are. I love that. And you know, I, I keep nodding my head. And if you're, you're not watching this on YouTube or anything, um, I just feel like a lot of that was me too. Like, I feel like you're literally in my brain and you're thinking what I was thinking. And if you read the book that I wrote, I, I devote a whole section to asking the right questions and to just really fine tune your ear. You know, we're listening to all these messages externally from people, from uh, media, and we just kind of form this amalgam of what we think we are and so when you can peel back the layers it's it's profound and yes every step even the missteps seem like they fall into place and so yeah you you did perfect timing um we didn't have a buzzer or anything so we're gonna bleed right into the second question so um i looked and i saw that um you are i always pronounce mispronounce this word an enneagram four four too okay too. well the one with the people right and yeah you I'm the, considered the helper yeah and so um I want to ask about that because I feel like yeah. you're you're digging into that so it bleeds nicely with the second question so who are you now and I want to kind of personalize it to you Jackie so you know I feel like with me I'm an Enneagram four maybe that's maybe that's why I remember oh, the individualist um no three then the other one? Oh, the achiever there you go. And so, yeah. Um, but I have a four wing. And so, okay. um, that makes you know, sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I was like reading everything and I don't know what test you took, but, um, it said the levels like an unhealthy three, a, a, a normal three, and then a high functioning three, an ideal three. And so what I'm hearing is that maybe you were like an unhealthy too, right? And I feel like now you're really hitting your stride and you're still the same person like you're saying, but it's this um, healthier version and perhaps the most optimal one you've experienced so far. So um, who are you? I, I feel, I appreciate so much that you did so much research in me. It, it, that's really, really thoughtful and intentional. And I know how much work goes behind this. So I want to validate you, which is funny that this is the first thing that comes out of my mouth because it blends right into who I am as a person. <laughs> I always want to validate people and validating others comes so naturally to me, but validating myself is really, really hard and something I'm working on. And it's interesting that you talked about in your book, having a whole chapter on fine tuning your ear, because a couple weeks ago in therapy, I asked my therapist the question, how do I even learn to hear myself, you know, deeply? And I feel like bits and pieces I am doing as we, as we're having these conversations, Mm -hmm. I'm able to be so reflective and aware because I have done a lot of work, but it's connecting that cerebral to my soul and actually learning to embody that belief 
of trusting myself. And sometimes you need a little help. You need someone to help you along the way. I'm fortunate that I have my husband who is my partner and always tells me the hard truth, but the real truth. And he'll be able to tell me like, that's a lie or that's not yours to carry. And so moving into who I am, I am a proud Enneagram too. At first when I realized that this was my type, which it's categorized as the helper. And um, for you guys who don't know what Enneagram is, it's basically a typology system. It's different than any other typology system out there. It really gets to the core being of your desires and then your basic fears, mm -hmm. um, kind of where your motivation comes from as a human. And for me, my basic desire is to feel loved. And sometimes I go about doing that in the most genuine ways without strings being attached. But if I feel wronged or if I feel bitter or if I feel like I'm not getting some sort of appreciation or recognition, I can start trying to manipulate a situation to get that feeling of being loved. So when I heard that I was a two, it was really hard to kind of sit with because it tapped into that shadow side of me that I thought nobody ever knew. And how I told you, I would look at myself and be like, who am I really? Like, who is this person? Because those dark parts are really hard to sit with sometimes. But with that darkness comes so much beauty of the other side of me that is the most genuine side of me. And those things come from, sometimes that manipulative force comes from this fear of being unwanted or unworthy and feeling like I don't deserve the love that I receive. And so who I am today is someone who is trying to be my best at all times, better for myself, better for my husband, better for my friends, better for my family, for my job, for my dog. Um, and it's not always easy, but I'm able to recognize the times that are really hard and I'm able to step out of it a little bit better because I'm doing the hard work. Today. Right. I, I feel like um, we're, we're never going to kick our innermost um, demons, right? And I completely, but it's about, like you're saying, rebounding a little bit faster from those low, low points. That's the indication of true growth, not the elimination of, but the reduction of those lows. And I think too, recognizing that those things will probably always be a part of me and learning how to recognize them, not sit in them as long and then have tangible tools to help me move out of them. Mm -hmm. And I recently did another typology type thing because I love learning about myself because I love learning about others, mm -hmm. more so others. But um, I did the human design, which takes up your genetic makeup and where you were. And I'm like, kind of like a mystic at heart too. Like I like all the woo woo things, which is also very not like our culture at <laughs> all. Yeah. But um, I am a projector. So it makes a lot of sense with my Enneagram type too. Like I can take in a lot of people's energy. I can hold a lot of people's stories, but recognizing what is and is not mine to hold is where I'm at now. Realizing that it's okay to say no. I don't have to say yes to everything because I can feel the other person's need and I want to meet that need before they even tell me what their need is. Mm -hmm. And realizing that that's not my role all the time, even though it's my natural desire. And I mean, um, you're, you're even making career moves to suit that, right? So yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know that about you because we just hopped on, we're like crossing podcasts, right? Cross pollution, uh, pollination. <laughs> pollination. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and, um, you know, you said you were in speech therapy and then you switched into right now you're studying school psychology. So we have about two minutes. And so I want to just um, ask if all of this was in preparation for that role and intentional preparation for that role, or if it was like a natural byproduct of everything that you're doing. Um, definitely a natural byproduct of everything that I've done. I would have never dreamed of this career for myself. A girlfriend I know is a school psychologist as well, and I didn't understand the role, but I always knew I wanted to help people, which makes sense, again, with who I am. 
But moving into this role, all the things I've done, you know, I have a special education master's degree. I worked in a special education classroom. I was a speech pathology assistant. All led me to these skills to become a school psychologist and to also pursue lifelong learning. I used to feel so sh much shame that I wasn't getting into the education or the career path that I thought I was trying to like fit myself in. Mm -hmm. But I realize now that it's because there was something for me that I didn't even know was for me. Right. And I just had to take all these other steps to get there. So everything was a byproduct of my past, which I felt were missteps, but ended up being um, like these beautiful lily pads that led me to the other side. And I mean, I really like, and there's like about a minute, so I'll try to be quick, but I, I really like that um, you mentioned that, you know, everything that you did felt like, you needed to go through it because yes. um, I don't know if you would have found this right without all of those things. And I don't know, you, you mentioned lily pads. I like that imagery. Um, I just feel like everything that you're doing, like you're right where you need to be. And we were talking about that, you know, timelines. And even with this uh, concept, it, it's time is such a factor, but um, you know, we're in our late twenties. Some think we should be, you know, at X point and both of us are not there. And I think we're finding, more of a joy from not being where we're perceived to be. Oh, there's 10 seconds. I mean, you didn't beat the, I didn't beat the clock if I actually could do it myself, but um, yeah, I, I love that about you. And I'm going to stop this before it rings, but I'll, okay. I'll let you speak. Cause I really, I really want to get that from you. So, um, you know, psychology is so expansive and it's like, you did so much work, Jackie. And like, you're, it's like right when you needed to heal and right when you needed to discover yourself, it's like this door opened. So it was all in perfect, perfect timing. We talk about throwing out the timeline, but once we throw it out, it lines up and it's perfect. It's counterintuitive, right? Yeah, right. It's the paradox of life. Mm -hmm. It's the paradox of all that we are. In so much of our life, we want to fit into these boxes. We want labels, we want understanding, but because us as humans, we are so cerebral. We just want things to make sense. We want it to be black and white, but the truth is, is things are gray. And even more than gray, things are technicolor. Like mm -hmm. there's a gradient and everybody fits on this spectrum and touching on my little lily pads to get to where I am now on the beautiful other side or this pond, whatever I like to call it. I mean, I honestly probably still am not there. I'm still on a lily pad to be quite honest. I think we always are in process, but nothing ever really felt right. Mm -hmm. Nothing felt connected. Nothing felt connected to me. And then when I finally decided to answer that call to myself and be like, I actually don't think I want that for myself. Maybe I want this. And allowing myself to explore those other things led me to be like, okay, well, this isn't it. Maybe I want this. Okay, well, that's not it, but I'm getting closer. Oh, here this yes, is it yeah this is it and i am starting to listen to those cues and now so much of my life is started showing me that i can trust myself it doesn't have to be what jimmy says what tommy says what sally says like i can't trust myself and and isn't it beautiful like if you just explore and that's the scariest part we think that that means you're going to be lost. You're going to be drowning. You're going to be floating in an endless sea of options. But the moment you release, it's like everything narrows down specifically to what was created for you, what was assigned for you, and what you're meant to do to actualize your purpose. So this actually bleeds right nicely into our third question. So who will you be right now that you've done all this work and now that you've um, completely kind of pivoted in a way that feels authentic to you, who will you be moving forward? I want to be, I want to show people that it's not easy exactly. and that I think right now we're kind of like glamorizing the struggle. It was hard. Oh, the past seven years of my life have been some of the lowest of the lows and some of the highest of the highs. Like it's now I'm here and I can look back and be like, oh, this was all good, you know, but it wasn't all good. And I want to be honest with people. I 
want to be a beacon of hope that if you are struggling, it's okay. Sit in it, move out of it, because what you do coming out of it is more important than what you did to get there. And I just want to be a person that represents what it is to be the most human of humans. We talked a lot about that on our, on my podcast and Mm -hmm. that there's space for it all. We are not one dimensional. We are multidimensional and it's okay to not know. And it's okay to step out of whatever roles you feel society has placed on you or whatever things you feel have influenced you. Um, just trusting yourself. I want to be that for other people. Um, I feel like that's like such a, I've never really said that out loud. I've told my husband that, but. Um, that's a victory. So. That's a victory. <laughs> yeah. Hard. It's hard. And, and too, like, I just, I want to live a life that's full and rich and full of love and squash the hate and a life with less insecurity. I struggle with that a lot. It's my basic fear is like being unwanted and unworthy. And anytime I share that with friends, they're so surprised. And it even makes me feel like owning that is a big part of my healing, being able to proclaim that those are things that are hard for me and that that's my experience. And my experience is my experience to own, not anybody else's, just like everybody's experience is their experience to own. And realizing that I do have value just like everybody has value. And I want people to feel that. Yeah, I mean, like, I really like that you're saying that here on the podcast. But I think even in your social media pages, you're really good about kind of uh, purging that insecurity, right? And being owning that victory or those uh, perceived weaknesses, right, about yourself. And and honestly, for me on my page too, uh, I, I really like that you like memorized every single one by label. I, I can't do that right now in this season of my life. But yes, I am the achiever. And I know that. I mean, the past five years have been all about that. But, um, you know, in the podcast world, I'm allowing myself to be imperfect. And I'm even saying that I... Um, I'm okay with releasing a subpar product in my eyes because, you know, my biggest weakness is to feel like I'm not good enough. And like, um, you know, that if I don't perform, I don't value anything. Yeah. Yeah. You have to keep striving. Right. If, If not, then there's nothing. Right. And I'm a fraud. That's my biggest thing. My biggest weakness. And it was so true. It was so hard to read. But so hard to read. You feel like someone's freaking looking at those horrible. You're like, oh my God, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, I've always known that about myself, but to see it on paper was really, really <laughs> um, kind of life-changing. And so it's a conscious, intentional act when I say this episode in my eyes is not the best, but I'm going to release it anyways, because that's saying I can be imperfect and I can still you know, be me, you know, I I can still have value before if it wasn't perfect, there was no value, there was no point. And so for me to release that post or for me to release that thought into the world is me like you owning these weaknesses and just saying, you know what, fuck it. Like I do have value outside of my performance. They're not the only determining factors of who I am. Absolutely. And whenever you open yourself up to that type of criticism, And I'm saying that in quotes, you open yourself up to opportunity too. Mm -hmm. You can't have one without the other. Again, back to the paradox. We want everything to be one-sided. It's not. Literally, life is all about energy. It's all about the yin and the yang. You need both to make one complete circle. And so if you don't give yourself the opportunity to fail, you always rob yourself the opportunity to grow. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's a lot of pressure. Sorry, this is like stuff I'm working on with my therapist. He's like, you don't have to say always. He's like, that's still, you're still putting pressure on yourself to yeah. be imperfect. Settle down. Like it's that's okay. True. No, 100%. But he, but I think that it's true. You can't have one without the other and learning how to coexist with them is yeah. like where we want to be. 
because even me, like sometimes when I'm like proclaiming things to the world and I think, yeah, that's a victory. Sometimes I say, wait, you don't have to apologize. Like nobody would have noticed had you not thrown it out there. So you throwing it out there is still a form of insecurity, hoping that you catch it before somebody else does. Oh my gosh. I just had this conversation with my husband. It's ego. Mm -hmm. It's our ego getting in the way of whenever you're insecure or whenever you feel like some pride's gotten in the way, like that's you, your ego getting in the way, blocking you thinking like, well, you should have, you should have, you should yourself. You're like, I should have known better. I should have done this. And it's your ego being like, you, sh- you are more than those mistakes. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's a bunch of bullshit. We're not, mm-hmm. we're not. And it's hard. It's hard doing that ego work too. 100%. Yeah. Cause like, I wanted to say it in every intro when I felt like the, the quality wasn't good. Right. But then maybe I did it twice. Cause it was really bad that time. We had a lot of like little technical things, but other than that, I said, stop it stop it because you're making little conditions on your, your worth and on your content Mm -hmm. by adding that disclaimer and that caveat, you don't need to prep anybody. You're enough the way you are and it's fine. Whoever's truly with you will be with you in in spite of imperfection. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's deep. Okay. (laughs) I don't know. We have a minute and a half. Okay. I feel like we're like, our energies are like, (laughs) yeah. I mean, we, I'm writing the high of, of, of our episode on your thing, too, so I'm like, Woo. Um, but we have about a minute left. So is there anything else you want to add to that question? Or you want to jump into the um, advice part? I also want to step into me as a creative. It feels so hard to say that. I know. But Earlier I, when, when I said artist or something, like you, you kind of, you know. Stopped. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Because I don't necessarily consider myself an artistic person but again I think that's conditioning us at birth we are naturally curious people I'm super curious and I think my creativity shows up in different way than maybe one of my friends who is a or like my brother he's an artist he's a glass blower he's a painter he's a photographer those are not my gifts those are his gifts but I'm creative in a different way I think I'm creative when it comes to community. I'm creative when it comes to my podcast or I'm tapping into different parts of myself that are fun that I've never really explored before. Um, Realizing that I enjoy writing. I didn't know that. I like writing my long captions. They're very like easy to do. And so just stepping into that and being like, it's okay to say that I consider myself a little bit creative. Maybe I wouldn't consider myself a full creative, but a little bit. Um, and you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because even me, like everybody knows me as a good writer, but I have a hard time saying I am an author, right? Like I still don't broadcast that too much if I don't need to. And, um, I got so comfortable with the dance label that adopting all these other labels is a little difficult to be honest. So I like that you're speaking into that because, you know, it's about dimension and it's about l- layers of yourself. And sometimes we're scared to dip our toes into those layers. And so um, the, the more general we get, right, like um, creative, that, that can be a huge umbrella term for any interpretation of a creative. So it doesn't necessarily have to be creative painter, right? If we, if we like pigeonhole ourselves into painter, that's super, super specific. But getting more general is actually quite powerful. So final question. Um, We have the one that we like to give into our audience directly to them. And so it's how can listeners avoid clocking out? So again, instead of just kind of going on cruise control with their lives, how can they wake up a little dream, live, feel? And you're good about that. So that would be a really good question. Um, I would say find a partner um, that you can get clear with. And if, if you don't feel like a partner is for you, I don't want to like pigeonhole or see everybody has just like a group, find community is Mm -hmm. probably a better word that you can get very clear with your intentions, get very clear and feel safe to share those dreams that you feel are big and outlandish. Or even if you have dreams to stay home or you have dreams to just learn to bake the best cookie and you're feeling worried because you've never done that before telling someone that you feel safe with to do, I think is huge because getting clear on what you want to do 
then leads into the next step of how you want to execute that. So getting clear and focusing in, and then that allows you to learn to show up for yourself. I think that's another tangible tool of how you don't clock out is show up for yourself every day, show up for yourself in the morning, show up for yourself at work, show up for yourself when it's really fucking hard, Mm -hmm. because when you do that, you'll show up for others in an even better way. You don't realize, but you have to do the work for yourself first. Because right. if you don't. I mean, I, I kind of got teary. I don't know if you can I tell, but <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. You talking about finding a partner uh, that just makes me want to like go hug my husband. Because, me too. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I would have done all this. And honestly, I came from a really bad relationship too, ended horribly. And I remember when I lived in San Antonio briefly, I was going to move back for him. And then I moved back. We were engaged. We broke up two weeks later. So it's like my whole universe had crashed because I had just moved. And I remember, and I only like two people know this, but um, I remember that when I got to the apartment and I was clearing it out to come back home because my parents said, we already paid for everything for you one time and you chose a guy. So the next time you leave the house, it's going to be on your own volition. Right. And I was on the floor crying. I I could not pick up one thing. My brothers and my parents did it because I was so destroyed. I was just pathetically on the floor crying, devastated. And so I thought that guy was it. And that's that he treated me like shit at the time. We've since uh, reconciled, believe it or not. I didn't ever think that was going to happen, but I went through this program in my church um, and I confronted him and it was surprisingly very much needed. I thought I was over it and I wasn't. So um, that's that you're married and that's okay to say. (laughs) Yeah. And and it felt like a failure. Um, And people were like, it's just an engagement, but it it felt, you know, that was, that was going to lead to something big and so I was so hung up on that guy so hung up and had I stayed with him I I don't even know who I would have been because I feel like I would have been so limited so narrow so oppressed to be honest and that's not a knock on him now that's just saying our 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 values and our vision were so out of line and um (laughs) my husband's so amazing and you talking about that um, I don't know. I want to go hug him. <laughs> yeah, I think just finding people. I wrote this in one of my posts on my Instagram specifically about my husband, but I think that it can kind of translate to your friendships or your relationships, your family, whatever it is, whatever relationships you have, where you can stand totally yourself, but also totally together. Mm-hmm. You know, because here we are talking about our husbands and how I feel my husband's done so much for me too. Um, really helped me believe I can do and be whatever I want. Whatever that little voice in my head tells me, no, he's like, that's a lie. That's not yours. That's not true. But realizing like I am independent of him and I struggle with codependency. I'll be honest but it's something that I'm actively working against because I don't want that for our relationship. Mm -hmm. Also, we stand together, like two strong pillars that hold up our family, three, including God, but that hold up our family, but we're independent, but we're together. And so I encourage anybody out there, whatever relationships you have, be completely yourself so that you can also be who you need to be when you're together as well, I think will help you really get super clear on how you want to live. And that's the hardest part to really just be that open with somebody. You're so scared. Um, It is probably when you find that person that you feel that safety with, just taking that first little confession or purging of your desires is like the scariest feeling in the world because you, you want to be seen, but you're used to being unseen. So the moment you allow yourself to be fully visible is terrifying. Um, But once you do it, not that you get addicted to that feeling, but you just know that it feels good in your soul. And so, like you're saying, it has this transformative effect, not that you're dependent on their, um, you know, validation, but the fact that you could even muster up the courage to speak your things out loud. That is what they give you, not, not the dependency. And it makes you want to keep doing that in your life. And that goes into another point of presence. 
fully being present with whoever you're with, which is hard. We're so busy. Our minds are going a thousand miles a minute. We have our to-do lists that are 20,000 pages long. Like Mm -hmm. everybody has them, whatever your life looks like. And learning how to really be present and making people feel like you are with them. Like that's the first conversation you're having all day will take you miles and miles and miles because that is where I think us, our innate desires lie. Like we want that type of deep intimacy and we can have it with others. We can have it with ourselves. And so I encourage everybody to, to do the work, like go to therapy. Even if you feel like you've never encountered any trauma in your life, like go talk to someone, uncover things, learn about yourself. That's a great place to do that. Um, And just be present in this moment. I yeah. I mean, I love podcasting as a medium because I think yeah. that it that's arguably the most present you have to be to get good conversation out that people want to listen to. <laughs> um, that takes work. That takes um, a sort of uh, emotional intelligence that people kind of just overlook. So I love the medium for that. And I'm so grateful because I get to share space like this with you. We get to explore these ideas and some people want to have these conversations, right? But for now, they're living vicariously through us while they, um, you know, break through that fear in their lives. So um, you are now in the reflection slash verdict part of the interview so you did that one really nicely the first one you did fine the second one I gave you more time so we won't count that one um the third one that one the buzzer got you and then this one you were good so you beat the clock how do you feel (laughs) um I feel like we could have probably just kept talking and talking and talking yeah for sure I was like um you know I was worried about like putting that limitation on you and I was like will it strip it of its authenticity but I still felt like we were in those minutes together and like because I cared so much about those minutes they felt longer than the normal eight and a half minutes with somebody else I don't know if that makes sense I wonder too if it was helpful that we did just have like a really deep conversation prior to this too Mm -hmm. so we already kind of felt in like some sort of groove so everybody go check that out and then come listen to this but honestly I think that that had to have been helpful because I felt the same I was worried I typically I'm not good at standardized testing Mm -hmm. I have some like comprehension like auditory processing stuff um undiagnosed (laughs) (laughs) self-declared but I think that um I kind of you put me at ease to not feel worried about it so that was helpful Yeah. And again, like I I wanted to just, I didn't want to look at the clock and normally with everybody else, I'm like, (laughs) but um, I I just wanted to enjoy. I just wanted to kind of poke your brain and and it was a blast. So thanks so much, Jackie. This was so great. I loved it. Um, I didn't really know what to expect coming in. (laughs) And this has filled me up. I feel like because I'm a projector and type two, like I'm going to have to take some downtime and drink my coffee before I jump into schoolwork, which I need to do. But um, I appreciate you so much for having me and thinking of me to come on the podcast. Um, The way you reflect me, like the way you hold a mirror up to me is, um, I'm probably going to start like really, really sweet. And you don't have to say those things. And so makes me feel like I'm showing up in a way that is reflecting the goodness that I want to. So I appreciate that. Yeah. um, I feel like if we're reflecting on your answers, um, you're definitely on track to leaving the kind of legacy you're talking about of love (laughs) and of community and of, you know, leaving a legacy of creativity, but personalized creativity, you know, sometimes even with creativity, we want to fall into the creative realm that other people imagine. So I feel like you're right on track, Jackie, and um, you're going to do it. I I know you will. So um, where can they reach you so they can Ah. watch the journey? Yeah. So you guys can find me at more like podcast Instagram. Um, You'll definitely also see Michelle's episode. So go check that out. We talk all about the beauties of being human. So go give that a listen. Um, You can also find me at more like podcast on Spotify and iTunes, whatever you prefer, whatever your preferred medium to subscribe to 
go hit that with subscribe. Um, and then you can find me at my personal at Jackie Borrego underscore on Instagram. So come follow me. Yeah. Yeah. And follow me too. I mean, some, <laughs> of you guys, some of you guys are following me, but like not on the subscribe button. I should be better about that. <laughs> call to action a call to action yeah, yeah i know i'm bad about that okay so we are clocking out here guys but i hope you don't clock out in your own life thanks thank you yeah and we're out